so glad that you're in the presence of the Lord with us today. And Judah, thank you for being here. If you're part of it and you know somebody needs a word, come on, come on, just share it right now. Share the share the stream and let them know that we're part. God bless you as you as you are part of this today. Man, I cannot wait. Um, I suspect we are getting closer and closer and closer to being able to reopen. And I don't know how you feel, but I am so excited. I, um, <clears throat> as an introvert, it's, it's been nice to be in my bubble, but I'm ready to, for this bubble to break. Hallelujah, and be around people. And uh, I miss you like crazy. Uh, my wife yelled at me last week. She fussed at me, y'all pray for me. Um, she fussed at me. She said, you cannot say things like we're throwing babies. You want people to throw babies while you're preaching because somebody may actually be dumb enough to throw their baby and then we're going to be liable because you're on video. So listen, y'all pray for your weaker brother. Pray for your weaker brother. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. That's not true, but I'm going to try to do better. But uh, we, had, we had church uh, last week. Man, come on, that he is doing stuff. He, the terror by night, the, the arrow that flies by day. Come on, the pestilence in darkness and the, the destruction that lays waste at noonday, that all of those things we get to watch take place, but we don't have to experience ourselves. To God be the glory for that. Today I'm going to show you why we don't have to worry about that, um, where we get to be in, um, in this series entitled Abide. And, and i got to be honest with you, I have a plan to be transitioning in a couple weeks, but, but every time I turn around while I'm preaching, the Lord drops something else in my spirit. So I don't know, I don't know how long this thing's going to last, but listen, I know how long this word lasts. It lasts forever. Hallelujah. And, um, and this promise of protection, it is ours to be had and to be lived in. And, and we're going to mine this treasure. I mean, we got nowhere else to be. So we might as well mine the treasure and find out exactly what it is that the Lord is doing and what the Lord is saying in our lives. Listen, I'm going to um, subtitle this message this morning. And again, if you know someone who's struggling with anxiety, with fear, with worry, that this is a part of their life. Listen, this is one of those sermons. I, I just, I, I know where I'm going. I know where I believe the spirit of the Lord is going to take us today. I believe I have the heart of God and I ask him to give me the words to communicate and articulate effectively to the people of God today. And, um, and, and today I just encourage you to share, to, to encourage people to, to view, to log in, whether it's the nine or the 11 later on in the week, it doesn't really matter to me. I just believe this is a rhema word. This is a now word. Um, and I got to be honest with you, I, up until this point, I'm 44 years old. I've been doing ministry for 20 years or so. And, um, I, I've never heard anyone preach this text and the Lord's just given me divine direction and very specific things to say today. And I want you to lean in today. Uh, the old church, we'd say, lean in, lean in. In other words, I want you to put your ear close to this thing and pay attention to what the Lord is going to say, because I believe he's going to change our lives. I, I've subtitled this message out of the series, Abide, My Shield and Buckler. My Shield and Buckler. Now, I didn't say, those of you that are part of Judah, I didn't say my shield and buckler. I said my shield and buckler. It's, it's my shield and my buckler today. I want to preach to you on the subject of the shield and the buckler as it relates to Psalm 91. Listen, um, let's just pray right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the book, we ask for the author to sit right here today and show us the secrets to what was communicated in Psalm 91. We do not read this. We do not preach this with the author sitting idly by. We ask the author to come. Come Holy Spirit right now and anoint the hearers to hear, anoint the communicator to communicate that this would be a divine intersection in the lives of your people in such a way that we might forever ever be changed. We decree it, we declare it. You promised in Job that if we would decree a thing, it shall be established. Today, we decree your word and we ask you to establish it in our hearts and in our lives. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. I will remind you that Psalm 91 is the psalm of protection and covering. That that I, I've said this every week in our side of our series. That that the uh, Jewish rabbis teach that if you will quote Psalms 91 seven times, that faith will reside in the heart of that person that will will will, will quote Psalm 91. That that all throughout the the appendages over the letters are the the the, the numerical the alphanumeric symbols of the Jewish well Hebrew words that that most of them have crowns, but over this, all throughout this text, that there are swords over the words all throughout Psalm 91, because this is a protection psalm. This is a psalm of covering. This is a psalm that you can cling to and find refuge in. And, and listen, divine protection comes with closeness. We, we do not get to be divinely protected and divinely um, covered if we are not divinely close. See, you and I must be connected. We must be close to the one who's covering us. We have to be close to the one who's protecting us. And, and we do not get the protection of the divine. We do not get the covering of the divine if we are not connected and close to the, to the one that is covering us and protecting us. And, and I want you to read with me Psalm 91. We've been doing this every single week through this series. And I believe there's power when we use our words and we articulate. Come on, and I want you to say these words with me today. I want you to communicate these words with me today. I want you to speak them into the atmosphere of your home speak them into the atmosphere of your, your house and speak it into the atmosphere of your family structure. I want you to speak it into the atmosphere of your job. I don't care where you're listening or watching this today. I want you to speak this into the atmosphere and let divine protection and divine covering come over your life. Come on. Psalm 91, beginning with verse number one. This is a 911. This is a 911 stay at home order. And we're about to find out that at this stay at home order, 911, that there is a shield and a buckler that is afforded for you and for me. Come on. Psalm 91, verse one. He who dwells in the secret place of the most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fire and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you. Come on. With His feathers and under His wings. You shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the, of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Here it is. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you. Let's just give God praise right there for the word. Let's, let's give God praise right there for the protection. We give God praise for the covering right there in the closeness. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. It's charged right there. I just love the word of the Lord. Come on. Come on. Psalm 91 verse number one says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide 
abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen, he who makes a conscious decision to dwell in the secret place. Listen, if we choose to dwell in the secret place, then we have chosen to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That when I choose to dwell in, what I'm really doing is allowing myself to abide under. If I don't make a conscious decision to homestead in the secret place, listen, there's all kinds of opportunity for you and me to get into other situations, to go into other things, to find our place of homesteading in other directions. But the truth of the matter is, the promise of the Lord is right here, that if I will homestead in the secret place, I will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I do not get to choose to abide. What I must do is choose to dwell. If I will choose to dwell, if I will choose to homestead, the byproduct of my dwelling is that I get to abide. And not just abide anywhere, but if I will dwell in the secret place, I will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I, next week I'm going to talk about the secret place and the shadow of the Almighty. I'm going to show it to you in the scripture. It's going to be revolution, revelatory. It's going to be unbelievable. But what I have to do, what you and I have to do, is we have to choose to homestead, to sit down and to tarry in the secret place. I can't tarry in CNN. I can't tarry in MSNBC. I can't tarry in Fox News. I can't tarry in what my conspiracy theory is. I can't tarry in the negative and the pessimistic mindsets of my family members. No, I must choose to homestead in the secret place because if I will choose to dwell, I will also be allowed to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, he tells us in verse number four, which is where we're going to focus today. Uh, verse number four, it reveals to us our focus of our covering and our protection. The Bible says in Psalm 91, verse number four, watch this. We're going to mess with the entire verse. That he shall cover you with his feathers. That, that he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. That, that he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. That, that if I I will abide under the shadow, dwell in the secret place. I will abide, and what I'm abiding under is the covering of feathers and under his wings. Listen, these are not just any feathers. These are not just chicken wings, y'all. This is like an eagle. The, the, the psalmist is giving us a picture of this majestic, magnificent God who has these unbelievable armored feathers that you and I get to dwell and abide. See, the thing about being under the feathers of the Almighty is that all of the heat of the sun is being deflected away from me. You see, when you get under the shade of something, it knocks down the heat and the intensity. The reason why people will sit under a tree, the reason why people will get into a shade is because of the beating down of the sun makes everything so intense and it makes everything so hot. But when I choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, what I get to do is abide under the shadow. And if I'm in his shadow, I don't have to worry about the heat of COVID-19. I don't have to worry about the heat of wondering whether I'm going to be furloughed. I don't have to worry about the heat of whether or not I'm going to be okay. No, no, no. He's altogether lovely and he's got it all together. So I'm going to homestead under the shadow and the intensity and the heat will not be my portion because I've chosen to be under his wings. Uh, see, see, we have the ability to take refuge in our dwelling. It's one thing for me to go into my dwelling, but it's another thing for me to find refuge there. See, when I am under his wings, what it means is I'm not exposed to what everyone else is. Mm. Oh my goodness. I was up early this morning and I went into the grocery store to get, to get a, a coffee in. And I'm over there and I'm grabbing a coffee and everywhere I look, I'm watching people with face masks and, and they're trying to jump over the aisles and they really want to yell. And, and you know, you get a little bit of a cough because of an allergy and everybody thinks you got Rona and you got all this stuff going on and everybody's running to the left and to the right and all this stuff is happening. It's just chaos and craziness. And I'm not walking around in ignorance. I'm doing my due diligence. But listen, there is a layer of protection 
protection over my life that I don't have to worry about the face mask. Listen, I'll wear a face mask if I have to, but I've got a layer of protection beyond. Before you ever get to my face mask, you got to go through the shield. You got to go through the shadow. You got to go through the wings. If you're ever going to get to me, you got to go through the sovereign hands of God first. I'm not walking around in ignorance. I'm not walking around in arrogance, but I do know this confident thing that he who has begun a good work in me is faithful to perform it. And listen, there is not one devil in hell and there is not one virus on the earth that is going to stop the hand of God over my life. And the day he chooses to take me is the day he chooses to take me. And if this is the day he decides to take it, so be it unto me. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm not talking about being foolish. I'm not talking about being ignorant. I'm not talking around about walking around with arrogance, but I'm talking about this one confidence that God, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he's able to keep what's been committed to him even against that day. You can run around and be afraid if you want to, but I've decided to abide under the shadow of the wing of the almighty God. I feel like preaching today. I need you to understand today. I'm not walking in fear. Of whom shall I fear? And of what shall I be afraid? No, no, no. I don't have to worry about the terror by night, the arrow by day, the pestilence in darkness, or even though destruction at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but I'm under the shadow this morning of his wings. Of his wings. I am not exposed because I'm homesteading with the Lord. He says in Psalm 91 verse 4, that I can take refuge under his wings and then his truth shall become my shield and my buckler. That, that his truth shall become my shield. Shield. This is an interesting concept that the Lord has given us. Watch this. His wings and his feathers are my shield. That his feathers and his wing is my shield. It's my shield. It's my shield. It's, it's interesting that this shield, the Romans, they built this shield and, and this shield is um, built two and a half feet wide by four feet tall. This was the shield that the Roman soldiers would carry. Watch this. It, this shield is first mentioned in the story of David versus Goliath where the armor bearer, where the shield bearer would go before Goliath to face little David. This shield by standard was two and a half feet wide by four feet tall. Watch this. The reason they built it in this way is so that in the event there was an aerial attack, there was arrows that would fly after them, that it would be tall enough and it would be wide enough for the soldier to be able to hide himself completely behind the shield. That it did not matter the size of the arrow, it did not matter the length of the draw that they had to pull to get to them, that as long as they had this shield, that they could be completely covered and not exposed to the arrows that would be flying towards them. This shield was geared towards attacks from a distance. Uh, that in order for you to be protected from what's coming at you, what's hurling towards you, from a distance is you would grab hold of the shield and you would hide behind the shield in order to make sure that what's being hurled at you from a distance would not get to your life. It was your shield. It was your shield. See, you and I today, we have in the New Testament what we call the shield of faith, that, that you and I are to take up, the Bible says in the book of the Ephesians, that you and I are to take up the shield of faith. Interesting, that of all the, the first uh, three things of the armor of God, it tells us to put on, to put on, to put on, that we put it on and then it stays there. But in this shield of faith is the first time in the armor of God where we see God saying, you can pick this up 
or you can put this down. That this is something that you're going to need or this is something you're going to have to choose to need. That this can be a momentary or a seasonal or a moment by moment choice that you can make. That you can leave your faith off to the side if you want to and be exposed to what Ephesians says are the fiery darts of the devil or you can choose to take up the shield of faith. And if I take up this shield, I, uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm positioning myself to not be hit by the things that are coming after me from a distance. It is my shield. It is my shield. It's curved because it doesn't matter the angle you come at from a frontal assault. I still have layers of protection around me because I have a shield. There is a barrier between you getting to me called my shield. But interesting, he didn't just say shield, but he also said that his truth in Psalm 91 verse 4, it was a shield and a buckler. I love this statement here because what this is, is a buckler. It is a smaller version of the shield. This is something that you can hold, watch this, while this is dealing with an assault from a distance, this buckler, this buckler, this smaller shield is built for hand-to-hand -hand combat. That while one is fighting from a distance, while one is protecting from a distance, the other is for that up close, a front, and assault that is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Watch this, that this is geared towards me going with the shield of faith, grabbing my sword and I'm using my buckler to protect myself. I'm using my buckler for this, for the hits of the swords and the, and the things that are coming at me, the spears that are close to me. I can maneuver, I can adjust this buckler because I know that this buckler has enough strength to, up, to, to keep me from the, from the close up hand to hand combat. My shield keeps me protected from the things at a distance. But it is my buckler that I'm able to wield to protect me for the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Watch this. Not only was this buckler for protection, but it was also to be weaponized. You see, you can't pick up the shield and be swinging the shield around and do any real damage because it is weighted and it has the ability to move on us. But when I have a buckler, I am absolutely in control. This is like Captain America in Marvel, y'all, where he would take his shield and he would swing it and it would bounce back. Why? Because he weaponized his buckler. It was, it was built in the size and the right capacity that not only did it protect you, but it could also be a weapon that you could use. And I'm afraid there's way too many of us that don't have the shield of truth, that we don't have the buckler of truth, so we use it only as protection, but we never use it as the weapon it was meant to be. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7, that God is a buckler for those who walk uprightly. I want you to know today, not only do you have a shield, but you also have a buckler. It will protect you from the things that come close to you, from the hand-to-hand -hand combat of our day-to-day -day living, for that spirit that tries to get into your home, for that thing. You can weaponize your buckler and be protected because he is your shield and your buckler. Interesting that I have a shield and I have a buckler. I have a shield and I have a buckler, but what is the shield? What is the buckler? The Bible says in Psalm 91 verse four that his truth, his truth is a shield and a buckler. That my buckler is his truth. That my shield is his truth. Watch this. The thing that will protect me from the assaults from a distance is his truth. And the thing that will protect me and then be weaponized to use against the enemy for the hand-to-hand -hand combats of my life is not just anything. It's his truth. Hold on. His truth is my shield and my buckler. His truth, it doesn't matter your truth. It doesn't matter my truth. 
It doesn't matter someone else's truth. That my truth is my truth and your truth is your truth. Listen, we cannot live on your truth. We can't live on my truth. We can't be protected by your truth and we can't be protected by my truth. The only thing that will shield us and be weaponized, whether it's at a distance or hand-to-hand combat, is what he thinks about a situation. His truth is what protects me from a distance and up close up front. So, so today, what is truth? What is truth? Let me give it to you real simple. Truth is what God thinks about a situation. Let me say it again. Truth is what God thinks about a situation. You have to understand today that, that truth is not what you think about a situation. Truth is not what I think about a situation. Truth is what God thinks about a situation. The Bible says that your word is truth. That God's word, that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, this truth is my shield and my buckler. What God thinks about situations determines what my protection is. Mm. Let me say it again, that what God thinks about a situation is the determining factor of how protected I really am. If I'm going to walk in the protection of the divine, if I'm going to walk in the covering of the divine, it is not because I'm living my truth, I have to live his truth. It's not because I'm being protected and insulated by my truth or the people that agree with me and their truth. No, no, no. No, I am covered, I am protected by what he thinks about situations. Now, this is countercultural to our world today because everybody wants to live in their truth. This, this thing called moral relativism that we live in today that that whatever's right for you is right for you and whatever's right for me is right for me and whatever's wrong for you is wrong for you and whatever's wrong for me is wrong for me and you can live in your truth and I can live in my truth and we can both live in truth because it's our truth no 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 no. I'm not protected by your truth and and I'm not protected even by my truth I'm not protected by what you think about a situation and I'm not protected even by what I think about a situation but the covering that I get to dwell in is when I say, God, what do you think? What do you think about this relationship? What do you think about this disease? What do you think about this perversion? What do you think about this this alcoholism? What do you think about tobacco? What do you think about relationship premarital sex? What do you think about what I should be? What do you think I should be called to? What is your opinion about my life? What is your opinion about my plan? What is your opinion about my purpose? Never mind my truth. I need your truth because your word is the lamp unto my feet and it is the light into my path and if I'm going to be protected in this situation then I have to make sure I'm living in the truth that protects me at a distance but also protects me in the hand-to-hand combat of my life see it terrifies me where we are in the church today because everybody tells you what they think about the text I, I, I said it from the very beginning, and, and I know it's, it's not as relevant today. It's not as cool today. It's not as culturally sound today. But I've said from the inception, almost eight years now of Judah Church, that this is a word church. This is a word church. This is a church that it will be built, it will be founded on the word of the Lord. And I can't help what your truth is in contradiction to his truth. And I can't help what my preferences are that are in contradiction to his truth. No, we're going to allow God to be true and every other man be a liar. And we're going to try to live by the things that God has has decreed in his word. And I'm going to unapologetically tell you that we're going to walk in his truth, that this is a word church. Why? Because his word is the only thing that protects. His word is the only thing that covers. His truth is the only thing that ultimately matters. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word, his truth, it shall remain. I wish I could get a Pentecostal amen today. It's his truth. It's his truth. It doesn't matter what I think. I'm so terrified of watching people have small group devotions and and they'll read a text and go, now what do you think that meant? And then what do you think that meant? And then what do you think that meant? And and the Baptists think this and the Pentecostals think this and the Methodists think this and the Catholics don't think. That's a joke. Calm down. They're just told by the priest what to think. 
And, and what do you think this means? And what do you think this means? I don't care. I don't want to know what you think it is. I want to know that the author of the book dwells on the inside of me. And he tells me he will inspire and he will breathe all things. He will make all things known. I want to know what he said. I want to know what he thinks. If this word is immutable, if this word is unchanging, if this word is timeless, that it is as relevant in 2020 as the day it first got inked by under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, then I have to trust that no matter what I go through in 2020, it will protect me and it will weaponize against the thing that's trying to assault me in my life. Yeah, it's his truth. It's his truth. Whether I prefer it or not, whether I think I agree with it or not. See, it's so interesting to me how some people will lean on one portion of the book. Well, I'm a New Testament person. Well, I'm an, I'm an Old Testament person. Well, well, I'm a No Testament person. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter whether you're Old Testament, you're New Testament, or you're No Testament. Heaven and earth will pass away, but this truth, it shall remain. You can burn every book you want to, but you will not change the fact that this is truth. You can sit and contradict it all you want to. You can pretend this book doesn't exist, and it is outdated, and has nothing to do with anything. But at the end of the day, when life comes in, you at a distance or life comes to you for hand-to-hand -hand combat the only thing that will protect you and the only thing that will be your shield and your buckler is the truth of the word of the Lord and I thank God that he is truth and life yeah. Yeah. he's my shield truth is my shield and my buckler he is my shield and my buckler. See, I want to help you this morning. There's a difference between facts and truth. Hmm. The fact is, you may have cancer. But the truth is, he sent his word and healed our diseases. The fact is, you may have lost your job. But the truth is that God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The fact is, you may have lost a loved one, but the truth is, he will never leave you or forsake you. That he will be with you even until the end of the age. The fact is, you may have been an accident being born by your mother and father, but the truth is that before you were formed in your mother's womb, he had already knew you and already predestined you to be who you were going to be. That you are fearfully and wonderfully, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what the fact is the truth is what will set you free his word is truth and the truth shall set you free it is my shield and my buckler ah, that it is my shield and my buckler listen you can wear your funny face mask all you want to but before you ever get close to me, you will have to go through the shield. And if you make it past the protective covering of the shield, I've got the buckler coming in right behind it for hand-to-hand -hand combat. See, what most of us are not doing is we're hiding behind truth, but we have yet to weaponize that truth in our life. See, that's why you have to quote the word of the Lord. That's why you have to decree and declare a thing. That's why I keep saying that if you would decree a thing, it shall be established. And listen, I don't sit here and go, oh God, hide me behind your rock. Hide me behind your rock. No, no. Take this rock and hit the head of the giant if you got to because you are not just a protective covering you're a weapon to destroy the works of the enemy in my life he's not just a shield he's also my buckler He's also my buckler. When the intimate places of my life become vulnerable and exposed, I can pull his truth to that situation. It doesn't matter whether they rejected me. I hear you. I hear you. Today, but you don't understand how much my father has hurt me. Let me tell you something. That fact is your father rejected you. The fact is your father hurt you. The fact is your father may even be a little bit crazy. But the truth of the matter is he is a father to the fatherless. He's a mother to the motherless. Whatever you need him to be, he will be that 
that very thing. I ain't got no help in here today. I hope I get an amen on the outside of this camera. But I want you to know today that it doesn't matter what the facts are. You can walk in the truth of knowing that he is going to finish what he started. I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he's able to keep in protection those things that's been committed to him even against that day. So bring it on, big boy. Bring it on, devil. Sling your arrows if you want to. Come to hand-to-hand -hand combat if you want to. My God, I feel like George Jefferson. You don't want none of this. Okay, sorry. Uh, come on. Come on. He is my shield and my buckler. Hmm. Now, I want you to see something. Help me here. Help me. Help me. He is my shield and my buckler. Thank you. That he, watch this. Throw it verse 4. Watch this. He's going to cover me with feathers. And his wing shall be my shield and buckler. His wing is my shield. His feathers are my buckler. Hmm. What looks pretty and penetratable, penetrable, what looks to be cute is really very powerful. What, what's the pretty places of God are really power and protective places for me. Mm -mm. You're not going to get it. That when I think of God protecting me, he says, just look at my feathers. Hmm. Look, look, look at my feathers. You want protection in 2020? Listen, I don't have to give you my armor. I don't have to give you my breastplate. I don't have to give you my helmet. I don't have to give you any of my stuff. No, no, what I'm going to hand you is my feather because my feather has enough covering in it to protect you no matter what's coming against you. That, that even the cute little pretty things that you just want to pet in me has enough power in the petting places of my life to protect you from anything that you would go through. Whether it's protection from a distance or fronting from hand-to-hand -hand combat, even the pretty places in me. What are you saying to me, preacher? I'm saying to you that it doesn't matter if it's just John 3, 16. If all you got is for God so loved the world that there's enough power, there's enough protection, there's enough beauty but there's also enough weaponization inside of John 3, 16 to cover you no matter what it is that's coming against you. That even the pretty places has so much protection you don't have to worry about being exposed. <sighs> Let me finish with this. My shield and my buckler. There's a movie that came out a few years ago. It's called The 300. And I, I, I went to the movie the weekend it came out. And after about 10 minutes, I had to leave. So in no way am I endorsing this movie. But about two or three years ago, it came out on regular television. So they edited all the nonsense, or most of the nonsense. And I, I sat down and I watched. And there was this moment inside of The 300 where one of the enemies against the 300 <clears throat> said to one of the soldiers, said, listen, that we're going to send so many arrows that we're going to blot out the sun. That we're going to send so many arrows against you that it is going to blot out the sun. The guy's response was so profound that I thought I would even mention it today. He said, well, then if your arrows are going to blot out the sun, then we'll fight you in the shade. 
If you want to send so many arrows against me that you want to blot out the sun, <coughs> that's fine. We'll fight you in the shade. And I thought, no, I'm not going to fight you in the shade. I'm going to fight you in the shadow. Your arrow does not keep me protected from the sun. No, the feathers of his wings. I'm going to fight you in the shadow. I'm going to fight you in the shadow. You want to come against my home? You want to come against my family? You want to come against my finances? You want to come against my church family? You want to come against my health? You want to come against my sanity? You want to come against my love? You want to come against my joy? You want to come against my peace? That's fine. You can blot out the sun on the outside, but you will not blot out the S-O-N on the inside of me. I will fight you in my homestead. I will fight you in the secret place. If you ever find a way to get towards the secret place, I just want you to know you can knock out the sun with your arrows if you want to, but I have a shield and I have a buckler and it's in the shadow of his wing. I'll fight you in the shadow. Because it doesn't just protect me, it also fights for me. He is shield. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 35 verse 2, watch this y'all, to take hold of the shield and the buckler and stand up for God's help. I want you to know that this is the season to take hold of the shield and the buckler. For thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. No, I don't care what the arrow is and I don't care how long range the missile is. I have a shield who is a protector over my life. I will take up the shield and the buckler in Jeremiah chapter 46 verse number 3 it says I order you the prophet says I order you to take the buckler and the shield and to draw near to battle I'm here today to tell you we may be at home and this may be a stay at home order but what I believe God is really doing is calling me and you into the battlegrounds of the spirit now grab hold of your shield grab hold of your buckler and make war in the heavenlies in Psalm 90 one verse number seven I remind you that a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but I have a shield and I have a buckler and it will not draw nigh unto me it is my protection and my covering for the things coming away from me towards me and for the things that are for hand to hand combat in my life Somebody ought to just throw a shoe right now and give God a whoop whoop glory. <sighs> he is my shield and my buckler. Hand me that one more time. He is my shield and my buckler. He is my shield and my buckler. He is my shield and my buckler. My shield and my buckler are nothing more than God's feathers. Good God, I hope you hear what I'm saying this morning. That my shield and my buckler are nothing more than the feathers of God. Whom shall I fear and of what shall I be afraid? The feathers of God have enough impact to defend me from anything that the enemy would throw in my way. His feathers are my shield and my buckler. Today, go ahead, Antoine. He who dwells he who dwells he who dwells he who dwells see when you look at shields and you look at bucklers you immediately think warfare But when you think feathers, you immediately think rest. Huh. That's why we have what's known as a down feather pillow or comforter. Why? Because feathers show you peace, reveal to you rest, a place where you can lie down and sleep in peace. Huh. So while the feathers look like a place for you and I to rest in, it looks like defense mechanisms against our enemy. I'm running to the feathers, but my enemy's gonna have to contend with my shield and my buckler. 
Mm. It's a feather for me, but it's a shield against my enemy. It's a wing for me, but it's a weapon for the hand-to-hand combat of the adversary of my life. (laughs) I get to run to the feathers because, watch this, I've decided to dwell. But my enemy, while I'm resting in the feathers, my enemy has to contend with my fortress. For you see, his feathers, because I've chosen to homestead, have really become my fortress. Today, I've said it almost every Sunday, this is my secret place. But when I think of the potency of these feathers, I can't help but look and say, of whom shall I fear? And of what shall I be afraid? You can have fear or you can have feathers. If you have feathers, God will make a feather out of your fear. Holy Spirit, right now, I ask you to let us abide. We dwell right here in the secret place. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Father, whether it's fear, whether it's anxiety, whether it's depression, whether it's isolation, whether it's loneliness, whether it's perversion, whether it's addiction, whether it's bondage, whether it's relational issues, Father, your perfect love cast out all fear. Today, I pray that we would fight to get under the feathers. Help us, Holy Spirit, right now to fight to get under the feathers. Let us have a warfare mindset, not to fight against our enemy, but to find our refuge in the feathers of your wings. I pray, Lord, that we would run to the love, the peace, the safety, the refuge of your feathers. And let the good fight of faith be fortified in you, your truth, that is our shield and buckler today. Come on, right where you are, if you're, if you're comfortable, if you're able to, get up on your feet. Right where you are. And I just want you to slip up your hands right here. And I want you to open your hands like it's wings. I want you to open your hands like you're about to fly a plane. I want you to open your hands. Come on, come on. We're, we're, why are you going to do that, Pastor? Because the Bible says that he that waits upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Come on. That God has wings, and he's given you and me wings right here. And we're expanding our wings. And I ask for the wind of the Spirit to come underneath your sails today and lift you from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and from strength to strength. I say right now that a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you because you're under the feathers of the Lord. Somebody just worship Jesus. Just worship Jesus. Oh, somebody worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Come on, we're fighting right here. We're warring, we're warring, we're warring by a dwelling. We're warring by a dwelling right here. Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, Jesus.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you right now for every person that is outside of your wings, that is outside of your relationship with you. We pray right now that Holy Spirit, you would go right there and arrest the hearts and the minds with loving conviction. Draw them to the presence of a living Savior. I pray, Spirit of the living God, that you would break every chain, that you would break every bondage, that you would break every mindset, that you would break the knowledge that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God in their life. I thank you right now you are forgiving. I thank you right now that you are restoring. I thank you right now that you are renewing. I thank you right now that you are giving strength to the weary. I thank you right now that you are breathing peace to the broken. I thank you right now that you are creating a restoration in those that have been weathered and weary from this season. We pray right now in the name of the Father and of the Son that the fullness of your feathers would be the portion of your people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Uh, his truth is your shield and buckler. <laughs> what is weapons to your enemy is feathers to the beloved. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your protection today. Thank you for your truth today. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we trust in your name, oh God. We love you, we honor you. Every need on our prayer wall, Lord, I pray that you would raise up your standard against the adversary and be who you are in the needs of your people. We love you today. We honor you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen, I believe with all of my heart in the next few weeks, we're going to be able to get back together as a congregation. I believe that. I believe we're closer and closer than we've ever been. Listen, I don't, I hear all these people say, I got all this pent up praise. And I can't wait to get to church so then I can shout and get it all out. Listen, we're Judah. The building is not Judah, we're Judah. We owe him a praise every day in every way. Listen, don't you come up in here and dance if you hadn't been in your house dancing. My God. That, that's fake. That's religious. Come on, everybody else can have their pent-up praise and get their fix when they get to church. But I pray you come in exhausted because you've already given him all the praise every day. And when we get here, when we finally get here, and I believe it's in the next few weeks. Listen, we're already making plans right now. We're already doing safety protocols. We're already getting things in order to be able to do it according to the social distancing standards and what they're asking churches and places to do. We're already working on that to get it ready, to make it a safe, worship-filled environment. But listen, it is not going to be full of fear. It's going to be full of understanding and knowledge. But when we get together, listen, I pray the Holy Ghost hits you from your head all the way down to your toes, and we all forget because I want us to be spiritually intimate in spite of socially distanced. Listen, it's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. We're going to be able to get together. We may have to have five services to get it all in. But one way or the other, we're going to be together soon. Listen, our best days are not behind us. There's an overflow of new wine that's about to be poured out into our lives. It's not by chance. We're almost at Pentecost Sunday. There's a new outpouring that is about to happen to the body of Christ in this season. Listen, we're making plans and preparations right now for what it is that God's going to do. Our best days are not behind us. This is passing. I've been saying for weeks, this will come to pass. This has come to pass. No, no, this pass, this is passing. I see it in the spirit. This season is about to be over for us and we're about to walk into a new season of anointing power and prosperity. The best is yet to come. Yes, Believe that. Make confession unto God through that. Decree that over your life and it shall be established. And listen, no matter the fiery darts of the enemy or the closeness of his battle against you, his truth is your shield and buckler. You run to the feathers and he'll make sure you're covered. Yes. I love you today. May the Lord God of your fathers increase you a thousand times more than what you are. And may he fulfill every promise that he's given you. 
in the name of the Father, in the freedom of the Son, and in the power of the Spirit, we decree it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you real soon. Have an incredible rest of the day.